As a fighter, our worst fear is often getting an injury and being taken out of the game. The world champion Bruno Bastos is here to tell us something a little bit about that. Hello, and Bruno, welcome back for another episode of Inside the Fight. Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about something that pretty much every fighter on the planet has experience with, including you, which mm -hmm. is injuries. Yes. So why don't you tell us just kind of some of the injuries that you've got? you 33 years in the game, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you've had a joint or two uh, that's had some problems. Yes, yeah, so like I believe like... All like martial artists like when it goes to to joints right like knees shoulders hip and then wrist and then elbow and then all that right um, but then arthritis was something that was playing a big big role for me because I wasn't able to execute like perfectly like some movements I had to even take out of like I had to change my style um, of training and competing uh, to to be able to still perform. And then, but like on the teaching was the hardest part because you don't have the right to not teach everything. So the teaching was the hardest part for me with the arthritis, the level that it was uh, a few years ago. And Bruno, have you ever had to pull out of a tournament or not been able to compete due to your injuries? Oh, well, Jamie, like as as a fighter yourself, you know that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times do we go in to compete even with the injury, right? Yes. So, and that's what I did a lot. Um, I can't say regret because I wouldn't have the experience that I had mm -hmm. uh, doing that, that I can share now with my students and not let them go through to the same, like, hardship that I went. Mm -hmm. right? But, like, were a lot of tournaments that, that I wasn't a 100%, mm -hmm. and that was taking, like, a tool on me for sure. Sure. Yeah, and that's something, I mean, most fighters just get used to not competing at 100%. But mm -hmm. something you said a little earlier that really struck me was, I had to change my game. Mm -hmm. And can you describe that a little bit more and, and what maybe some of our viewers who aren't fighters don't understand about that and what that means? Uh, because I used to be much more aggressive. Uh, like with Laura, like people even go like on like old videos of me and like, oh my God, that was a highlight submission. Like, oh, a flying arm bow, a flying triangle, right? <laughs> but that was... 20s Bruno, right? Mm -hmm. Not 40s Bruno. Yeah. All right. And then, like, but so I think it started as a young, like, a uh, child, like 10 years old, in an era that we didn't have much information about training. And then I think I overtrained myself, like, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. By the time I was 14 years old, I was going to school, from school home to have lunch, and then go straight to train. I would train like six to eight hours a day. You know, like, I will not let any of my kids' students do that today. Right. Like, we have much more information. And no complaint on the instructors because they were doing what they think was the best at yeah. the time with the information that they had, right. right? So I think that was, like, the biggest thing. So I had to change, like, my style, like, become much more uh, conservative on my, on, my, on my style, all right, of, of competing. And that uh, reflect as well on the way that I start, like, win matches. So, like... If you if you are a champion like in anything in life, you figure out a way to win in whatever what you play in right. life. It's sports, life, business, whatever, right? And I was just trying to figure out the ways to to win. But the teaching part was really hard because of not being able to execute perfectly some of the moves that I like I think is important to to be teaching for the students. Right. So so here you are trying to demonstrate proper technique and ideal technique and physically you were struggling with being able to do that mm -hmm. because of the injuries and, and the challenges that you were having in your body. Is that accurate? Uh, not even that, but like even to, to play with my children, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh dad, let's go play a little soccer, let's go play basketball. Right. And then you, know, you go outside and then play you know, for twenty minutes but then the hips and then the knees and then like yeah. <laughs> and it, it has to be it's so disheartening, right? Because it's like you can't Obviously, you can't keep up, and then they're not ready to go inside yet, and they're like, you right. know, it's it's hard to say no in exactly. those moments and yeah. to. It's like because like, how am I gonna be the best fighter I can be for them mm -hmm. if I cannot right. play with them yeah. when like, when they need me need me there, right? So I think that that was also something that was was a real struggle for me, like Jamie and Kevin, like mm -hmm. not be able to like sometimes like 
just do things that I would love to be doing with my kids. Right. That like no more no, no more dead and, and kids stuff. Right. Absolutely. Now the great news today, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. the game has changed. Mm -hmm. The recovery aspect and the tools available today are very different. Can you tell us what happened for you after you met New Hope Regeneration? <laughs> well, I think that's like. Life change, of course, is the easiest thing to say, right? Uh, life changing, but like, it's not not just on like I can tell you that things that I wasn't able to do properly, um, even on the workout room, mm -hmm. right? So like I, I wasn't yeah. able to do like a full squat anymore. Right. I wasn't able to do like a bench press, bringing bring the the bar like to the chest because of the elbow, right, or the shoulder, mm -hmm. and then we go hip and the knee and then all that. Uh, so today, like, I'm a very different uh, person, like, physically. And then, of course, the physical impact on the mental, right? Yeah. Uh, with my daily activities uh, with my wife, with my children, with my students, uh, with the energy to teach seminars all over the world and be able to share that with hundreds and hundreds and thousands of, of people. Right. Um, because one thing that I'm very big now in that phase of, of my life is... Uh, it's not what I get from Jiu-Jitsu, what I give to Jiu-Jitsu. Right. And what I, what I want to give to Jiu-Jitsu is more important to people get to know Jiu-Jitsu. You know? And then my love for Jiu-Jitsu is so much that I feel that, in a sense, I was disrespecting Jiu-Jitsu for not being like 100%. Okay. That, that's really powerful. So you just felt at your internal level you weren't meeting where you needed to be for, for Jiu-Jitsu. Exactly, because Jiu-Jitsu changed my life, Right. And then get to the point where I met New Hope that re-changed like my life again, so I'm able to do the thing that the, the thing that I love uh, alongside my family because my wife is a black belt as well. My children they train and compete. You know, I have students that have started with me <clears throat> day one as a kids and now are black belt like adults. Right. You know, so that's amazing to 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 have, and then like be able to meet people. Like like you, Kevin, that you know, like transforms so many people's lives, and then like everything that you that you do is is hard to whew, <laughs> right uh, because I know how many how many people you have helped, how have helped me, help a lot of my students that were able to 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 have that. Lot, uh, some of my personal friends, so it's um, emotional, of course. But I just want to thank you and the New Hope team for that because. Because of you, I can leave jiu-jitsu 100% again. That's amazing. Thank beautiful. you so much. Yeah, it's yeah. super beautiful. Yeah. I got goosebumps yeah. again. I think all these shows are going to be that. like that. Um, so, so both of you being world champions and, and being in the situations that you were, oftentimes recovery can be really complicated and, and challenging and even difficult. So yeah. how easy was it getting therapy with New Hope Regeneration? Oh, it was incredibly easy. Um, I didn't face any challenges. I just traveled to the location and, you know, got my therapy and slept like a baby that night. Yeah, and, and you were on to living your life. Yeah. Bruno, what, what about you? And exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same for me. Like, was no problem to get, like, just travel to the location and be able to, to do it, you know, and then I know that for the people that I have a connection with, like, the same as well. I think it's amazing how you make in the way that like everyone that needs the, to, to, to do the, the, the therapy, mm -hmm. they can have like access to, to the, that. And I think that's like a big game changer because uh, of course there is the business part, but also has the human being that to want to be able to help people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and and, bef and uh, before, before New Hope Regeneration, really a lot of the only other options were to go out of country. For, exactly. for this life-changing therapy. So how amazing is it that people oh, get to stay in the States? Incredible. And yeah. as he said, just you have access to it. And that was a big thing for me because being an athlete, it was something I was, before I, I met you guys, something that was on my mind. But it's like I don't have access and maybe I can't afford it. And just so many challenges I faced. And then ultimately, you just you don't get the therapy you need at the time you need it. And... But yeah, yeah luckily, absolutely. You, so. Um, <laughs> so, Bruno, why would you encourage you know other academy or other academy owners to maybe connect with and partner with New Hope? I think the biggest thing is like they know that to be one hundred percent, they need help, and I think a lot of people they struggle with asking for help. Yeah. All right. Uh, but like 
there's no no there's no problem of vulnerable uh, being vulnerable or asking for help. I think they uh, should get it because not only for themselves but also for a lot of students, right? Like I have students over 70 years old, over six years old, over 50 years old. Um, a lot of like veterans that have been in a war and that have like suffer uh, the the physical and then the neurological as well aspect, you know. And then uh, I have seen the transformation that all that I have done for like a lot of my students. So I really encourage the the, uh, the academy owners to do that for them, of course, but also the connection that they're going to create for the students to be able right. to be 100 percent like enjoying jiu-jitsu. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bruno, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Uh, it just really is inspiring beyond measure. Um, and we just can't wait to see what you're going to do for the next 33 years in the world of jiu-jitsu. Please live every day for two days. So for more information, I want you to follow and subscribe and click below. And you can go to InsideTheFight.net. And join us next time on Inside the Fight. Thank you.